Good morning, Common Ground. Welcome to uh, second Sunday of Lent. Second Sunday. Second Sunday of Lent, and uh, we're glad you're here. And today's last Sunday of uh, February. So we're glad you're here this morning. And uh, this is Common Ground Traditional Service. And uh, so we're glad you chose this place to be a place of worship this morning. We have, before we start, uh, we have a few announcements. Uh, uh, pay attention to announcements. Uh, so there is the children's church and youth Bible study immediately following, well, children's church right now happening during the service and a youth Bible study happening immediately following the service. And fellowship lunch isn't today, it's the next week. So I know some of you are excited about the uh, lunch today, but it is next Sunday, so uh, just apologize for the uh, typo. And uh, there's a USFK Christian Women's Retreat, uh, one through three March this week. Uh, so please be in prayer if you haven't signed up. Uh, I don't know if there's time to sign up, but uh, if you haven't signed up, uh, please pray that God's presence be with him in uh, during the retreat. And next Sunday, we do have a parish council uh, meeting next Sunday at 09. Uh, so do please, if you're interested in how this service is run, and uh, if you look at the bottom of the bulletin during the announcement, uh, we, we've, been, we've been collecting quite a, quite a lot of offering. Uh, thanks for your uh, generosity generous giving. Uh, if you're interested in how we spend the money and where the money goes, uh, please come to the parish council meeting. Uh, we explain where every dollar goes. Uh, we strive to be transparent with our money and the way we run Common Ground Service and how we worship God. So uh, uh, please do come out, uh, be part of uh, parish council meeting. And if you lead for any ministry uh, in this Common Ground Service, you are expected to be there. So uh, please uh, be there at 09 in the classroom. And uh, Korean Women's Bible Study on Tuesdays happening, and the Men's, prayer, men's Bible Study on Monday, uh, Monday evening at the Family Life Center uh, is going, uh, going on along with the PWOC and a Men's Prayer Breakfast. So uh, please uh, be part of it and come out, um, learn more about God's Word. Is there any other announcements I might have missed? No? All right. Do we have any newcomers? This is your first time visiting with us, the first time worshiping with us, visitors. All right, we have a, we have a couple of hands, three hands. Uh, keep your hands up. We don't want to embarrass you. Uh, we just want to make sure that you have something to remember uh, your visit uh, to Common Ground by. Uh, there's uh, inside, there's an information card. Uh, if you if you are just here on TDY or training, that's okay, but uh, if you are here as a permanent party and if you fill out that information card, and uh, we'll love to reach out and connect uh, with you and get you connected with others in the area. All right. My least favorite part of the worship. So is anybody here worshiping with us the last time? Last time worshiping with us. Yes, we have one family, one couple. Right, I'm gonna invite up uh, Jessica and Andrew Smith uh, up here. So they've been, uh, they've been faithfully attending uh, this service and uh, Andrew's been serving as a usher. So uh, by him joining the, our usher team, uh, he lowered our average age of our ushers <laughs> drastically. <laughs> so uh, well, well th thank, you, thank you for your uh, uh, service and volunteer. So we wanna, we wanna present. Um, I'm going to just keep this short and sweet. Um, I've been, we've been attending here for the past two years. Um, this congregation and this family has been a really good one. Um, through, we've had a lot of great Bible studies and just, you know, some of the previous chaplains have made house calls to our home and been with us through some series of unfortunate events that have happened in our lives. So this is a family. We are leaving, and I know God will be faithful to us to find a new family, but... Uh, it still hurts nonetheless. So thank you, Common Ground, for having us, and uh, God bless you all. All right, thank you. So as one usher leaves, uh, we need 
we need another one to uh, take his his spot. So uh, if if God does just your heart, uh, please do uh, consider serving, and uh, we'll make sure that we'll pray for them during our uh, pastoral prayer time as well. And the tradition continues. So he is headed to Ansbach, Germany. So uh, if you want to go to a, those desirable locations in PCS to beautiful places, you have to come serve at a common <laughs> no, that, that's not That's not how God works, but you know, we, we would like to think that here at Common Ground. But anyways, uh, so uh, hey, hey thanks, thanks for your service and thanks for all coming. So can we all stand and greet one another in the name of the Lord? Yeah, scriptural call to worship comes before the uh, hymns. Scripture call to worship comes from 18th Psalm. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. Heavenly Father, as we come together this morning, we confess that you are a rock of salvation. You are our stronghold and you are a refuge. As we come together this morning, we come with a heavy hearts and burdens. Help us to take refuge in you and you alone, God. Be with us this hour. And may we worship you the way you deserve to be worshipped. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. If you could please stand as able and sing with me hymn number 718, Day by Day.
Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne to worship you and praise you, we come with a little portion of many blessings you've given us in our life. May you take this offering of our money, our time, our lives, our hearts, and use it for your glory and your honor and to further your kingdom. In Christ's name I pray. And this is a part of worship where we can continue worship through offering prayer before the Lord. There are many among us who are struggling with life struggles and burdens, heavy burdens on their hearts. And there are many among us who are dealing with sins in our lives. And that's why Jesus came to this earth to die on a cross to redeem us. At this time, we'll come before the Lord in, in prayer that, that we may truly experience the liberating joy that only He can give. And at this time, if you know of someone who's struggling with life's burdens and sins in their lives, and let's spend a moment and inter intercede for them. And we'll spend a few moments in a silent prayer, individual prayer. And then I'll lead us in a corporate prayer. And then at the end, we'll end our prayer by reciting the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you and give you praise and honor for you are our rock of salvation. Help us to continue to sing your praises to the nations. We gather here this morning to worship you, loving God. As we come to worship and praise your name this morning, we confess our sins before you, almighty God. Sin of, sin of not acknowledging your presence in our lives and disobeying your commandments for us. Forgive us of our sins and help us to experience the liberating joy only you can give this morning. And this morning, as, as we worship for the last time with the Smith family, Andrew and Jessica, God, just pray that as, we tr as they transition to Ansbach, Germany, may they have a smooth transition and may they be able to find a place of worship where they can get involved and continue to grow in you alone, God. And as those of us who are staying and, and send them, just help us to continue to pray for them, that we may not be able to see them physically, but continue to pray for them so that when we meet in heaven again, there'll be joyous reunion. And many of us, many among us come before your throne this morning with praises and prayer requests and deep cries of our hearts. Hear our prayers and answer them according to your will. This morning, we remember and lift up the nations and people around the world who are affected by recent wars and violence and natural disasters. Watch them under your care, and may they experience your love and comfort amidst the conflict and disasters. And we also pray that this common ground service will continue to be the channels that brings your comfort and peace and blessing to this Humphreys community. Be with all the leaders of Humphreys faith community that May they always be led by your spirit alone, God. And as we continue our service, we ask your double portions of blessing upon Chaplain Kim this morning as he brings forth your word for us. Allow him to speak boldly the truth that you will have us know this morning. We pray that only your name be exalted and honored in every day of our lives. We pray and ask all these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Our scripture reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 39, verses 11 through 23. That can be found on page 33 of your pew Bibles and also on the overhead behind me. So if you're able this morning, uh, please stand for the reading of the word. Genesis chapter 39, beginning with verse 11. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story, his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me. He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your grace and mercy. And thank you for your presence here in this Freedom Chapel, Lord. And thank you for your guidance in our everyday life. As your message is preached, Lord, give us the power of taking it into action, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How are you doing, Common Ground Congregation? God is good all the time. God is good all the time. Amen. So, a couple of weeks ago, Chaplain Che Lee preached the same Bible verse, remember? Right? And it was such an insightful message. I was moved and hearing from God a lot. And what was the title of it? Choose Discomforts. Remember? Yes, God gave us the talent of forget forgetfulness, right? Through the message, God gave me a heart to deliver the same message and the text, but little different angle, like synoptic preaching per se. So because Genesis 39 is one of the texts that I always go to, when I face like spiritual difficulties, hardship, or temptation. And this story is one of the most famous stories in the Bible and very well known, right? But as I read it, this time, God always gave us refreshment. And that this time it was repeated this sentence, the Lord was with Joseph and he prospered in verse two. And in verse 3, when his master saw that the Lord was with him, and also in verse 5, because of Joseph, the blessing of the Lord was on everything that Potiphar had. The Lord was with Joseph. That sentence somehow stood out to me this time. So, I want you to repeat after me. The Lord was with him. 
And this time, I want us to replace that him to your first name, okay? At the count of three. One, two, three. The Lord was with Juil. Is the Lord with you today? That is the key. I think that's everything. And we see the temptation in this chapter. Who is, who was Potiphar, the commander of Pharaoh's guard, right? He was one of the most trusted commanding general of Pharaoh when we look at his position today. And Potiphar's wife must be also, I can assume that she was very beautiful and attractive too, since he was, he had a power, right? You know, it's interesting to see how Bible describes stories. It described as if the author knows already everything outside looking in. No matter how stories are explicit, the Bible describes very vividly and even people's mindset as well. And that is one of the evidence that Bible is so true and written by the Holy Spirit. Amen. With that being said, when I look at Joseph's life, what an ups and downs. And his life had a, has a very special storyline. I'm sure every single one of you sitting down over here has a very special life. And nobody lived a normal life. And military life itself is very special and unique, right? So when we look at Joseph, hardship kind of runs in his family. And father Jacob he was a symbol of hardship, right? And Joseph took, took that lineage of hardship and he was sold to Egypt. Now, today we respect Joseph. But when we take a closer look at Joseph's childhood, I can safely say he was a spoiled child. The Bible writes in chapter 37, verse 2, he brought Jacob a bad report about his brothers all the time. And obviously, the Bible certifies Jacob showed a big, a great favoritism to Joseph. And you could probably imagine the vibe and atmosphere of the brothers when Joseph kind of showed himself off all the time. But Joseph, did he care? No, he didn't care about it. I guess he thought he was above everybody. Probably he was cocky. Probably he was spoiled. Not just one brother, but all the brothers hated him to the point they wanted to murder him, right? He was being hated by his own family because of his character and being spoiled and being too arrogant. One thing for sure is that Joseph was not a second man of Egypt material for sure when he was uh, young and when he is a child. And he was not ready to become the second man of Egypt when we look at his childhood personality and ability or capability. But here is the point. God chose Joseph and planned to deliver Israelites from the famine. Now, God started his training plan for Joseph so that he could be used according to God's purpose. So here is the first point. God trains us to use us for his grand plan. Amen? God chose Joseph to be the second man of Egypt deputy pharaoh of Egypt. And God's purpose was not just for Joseph to be famous or wealth, wealthy, but to save the chosen people through him. So we need to note here that sometimes God allows us to have fame and wealth as a side blessing. But God's purpose with us is much beyond our fame and wealth. That's why God's training plan started for Joseph when he was only 
17 years old. From Joseph's viewpoint, unfortunate incidents happen back to back at all times. God puts him into the fierce fire and tribulation and turmoil to make him a pure gold. Do you know God uses people who are ready to be used by God? If you are not ready, God cannot use you. They oftentimes go through extensive, extensive spiritual training. God always prepares hard, hard training before he uses us because we need to be ready, spiritually, mentally ready. We know now the happy ending story of Joseph, right? So we might not 100% understand how Joseph had felt at that time. But from Joseph's viewpoint, he fell under the pit, thinking his brother were just playing around with him as usual. And he probably ne never thought that the brother planned to kill him, actually. As his brother tried to kill him, what happened? God's, God intervened so that the Midianite merchant passed by. Although it was God's rescue plan, but from Joseph's viewpoint, it was an unfortunate event. Why that Midianite merchant passed by at the worst time? So his brothers got blinded by money, right? In Joseph's viewpoint. I'm pretty sure Joseph thought it was all prank, even if he was getting dragged to Egypt. Now, Joseph was being favored by his father, spoiled, who thought he was the best above all brother, now became a slave. Little more expensive than some animals. God puts him in the place of lowest of lower. And it was a tragedy for Joseph, but it was God's training plan to make him effective and usable when his time comes. Joseph could have been sold to just a random construction site where most slaves were worked to death. But through God's protection, Joseph was sold to Potiphar's house. So here is also an important message. Even though we are in the middle of the fire pit, turmoil, hardship, God's protection is always there. Amen. God sets the left and right, right boundaries, the limit to protect us, amen? Because it is a God's spiritual training. Even in the midst of hard, hardest training, the Lord is with us, amen? And even unbelievers witness God is with us. That's how we spread the gospel. Is there anyone who is going through this tough, training right now. Some might go through spiritual basic training. Or for some, go through spiritual ranger school. For some, spiritual seal training. Please remember, the Lord is with you. And God's protection is with you. The safety measure is already implemented. Amen. Now, a spoiled child who was always thought he was number one and arrogant, he became a slave. Through the training, he understood the life of slaves and being low. Once he completed that first phase of the training, which was, which was about being the right character, and today's text took place. As everything kind of settled down and the God's training on Egyptian uh, economic system through being in charge of Fortifier's house like a S8OIC, right? He, he was in charge of all that uh, wealth of uh, Fortifier's house. Now, 
God's test about the temptation of sil- sinful nature began. Because Joseph will face so many similar temptations when he becomes famous, which oftentimes becomes a curse. And Joseph was aware that it was God whom he was sinning against if he did not, uh, he, if he did, did the wicked things. So chapter 39, verse 9 says, How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? God, right? So he knew, regardless other people saw him or not, that God was watching him at all times, that God was with him all times. I think this test was the hardest test for Joseph because he was a young and healthy man. And the attractive lady asked him day after day, but Joseph did the right thing and did not sin against God. After passing the test, what do we usually expect after we do something good? We expect God's blessings, right? But what actually happened to Joseph? He was thrown into jail. Not just a regular jail, but it was a king's prisoner's jail. So as I read this, I personally did not understand the outcome of the test. Why God put Joseph in a worse place than a slave for doing the right thing, for making the right choice. Brothers and sisters, Joseph going into jail, in our worldly perspective, it seems like it's more curse after doing the right thing. But do you know, it was actually the closest shortcut to becoming the second man of Egypt? As soon as Joseph has the test of temptation. God did not wait a single second, but put him into political training and Egyptian customs and courtesy training in king's prisoner's jail. Because without knowing the politics, without knowing the customs and courtesies and cultures, Joseph could not survive that political battle in Egypt. And he was not ready to be used as a second man of Egypt without that training. Brothers and sisters, do you find yourself in the midst of hardship, in the midst of turmoil? I urge you to trust, fully trust our Lord, our God, and expect good spiritual outcome out of the training. Are you undergoing God's test so that you are fully qualified in this training and to be fully used by God? I urge you to defeat evil's whisper and not to sin against God. It's up to your decision. If you keep on failing over and over in this, with, with the same sinful matter repeatedly, your life will be like uh, 40 years in the wilderness. In the army terms, retrain, retrain, retrain. But if you break through the evil temptations in the name of Jesus, even if you feel like the outcome of refuting and winning over the evil temptation is going into the worst place, trust that God, trust that God's shortcut, the shortest distance to God's purpose is there in your life. If Joseph had slept with Potiphar's wife, we could probably assume that he could have lived a little bit better life, good life, temporarily. But sooner or later, Joseph must have been killed by 44 for adultery. Let us conclude the message. God has his special for you. God uses every single one of us differently. God prepares training opportunity for us to go through to be fully used by God according to his purpose. If we have bigger purpose, the bigger training is waiting for you. God tests us to see if we can go to the next phase. Now, we are faced with choice. We choose God or we choose the world. 
we choose the shortcut towards God's purpose or circling around the loop for retraining. Today, I challenge you, in the name of Jesus Christ, I challenge you. Are you sinning against God? Are you circling the loop for retrain for years, 15 years, 10 years, 20 years, whatsoever? Unlike Joseph, we have good news. You have one more chance because you have Jesus. As soon as you truly repent, cry out to Jesus, then he will cleanse you because he already paid on the cross. He will not remember your past when you repent. Not like when I scold my children, why did you do it again? Right? I remember those things. But God does not even remember as soon as you repent. Just like the judgment passed over the household where the blood of the ram, blood of lamb was painted around. And just like Jesus died earlier to pay the price for the other criminal who, was, who repented on the cross, just like Jesus died for you and died for me. I pray that we all choose this comfort. In other words, I pray that we all choose the spiritual shortcut. Amen? Let us pray. Lord, many times in our lives, Lord, we complained, why is it me that's suffering from this unfortunate hardship? And why is it me, this, this difficulties, Lord? Why? But through today's message, Lord, thank you for having your special plan for us. Thank you for your training plan. Lord, we confess our weaknesses. Although we could not pass the training at once like Joseph, Lord, you give more opportunities for me, for us. I pray that we choose the shortest spiritual shortcut toward your ultimate purpose, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
receive the benediction. May your journey of life be blessed with strength from Jesus to overcome obstacles, grace to embrace challenges. May you find joy in every step with Jesus, peace in every moment, and fulfillment with him in every endeavor. Amen.